Imagine you wake up in a hospital bed with amnesia, and you haven't the foggiest clue who you are. You try to recall your most recent memory, how you got here, but you just can't seem to remember. After a few seconds, you come to realize that you have no idea who you are. Suddenly, a few men enter the room and give you some shocking news. They tell you that you are the president of the United States. And that once you are feeling better, they have some very important issues that you have to deal with. How would you feel? You'd probably hold your head pretty high, realizing that you're someone of utmost importance. However, what if instead of addressing you as the President of the United States, those same people came in and informed you that you were the hospital janitor, and that instead of awaiting your return to the Oval Office, they're awaiting your return to the bathrooms on the second floor? How would you feel then? How would you view yourself? This idea connects to an important theme in this week's Parsha. Kleistral has just witnessed the miracles of leaving Mitzrayim, Egypt. And they're now on their way to Ma'an Torah. They're now on their way to receiving the Torah. In between, however, lies one event, Kriyas Yamsuf, the splitting of the sea. And one has to ask why Kriyas Yamsuf was even necessary. Why couldn't the Jews go from the spiritual high of the Makos, the plagues, and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Exodus itself, straight to Mount Torah? Why did they have to first pass through the sea? And the question is strengthened by the Midrash, which explains that the Jewish people didn't even cross the sea. They actually exited the Yamsuf on the very same side that they entered. So why did they even have to cross the Kriyas Yamsuf, cross the Yamsuf to begin with? The answer that many of the commentaries give is that Kriyas Yamsuf, and more specifically, the Jews passing through the sea, was a fundamental prerequisite for the Jews to receive the Torah. But the question we have to ask is, what is the importance of the sea, or, or water in general, in regards to the Jewish people's journey from Egypt to Sinai? So this question connects us back to a similar theme in Parshas Noach. It's interesting to ask why Hashem's chosen method for destroying the world was specifically through a flood, specifically through water. Hashem could have chosen any form of destruction He wanted, and yet He chose water. And we all associate Parshas Noah with the Mabel and the Teva, but there could have been many forms of this story. So why specifically water? In order to understand this, we have to first understand the deep ideas behind water itself. The Maharal explains that the fundamental nature of water is that it's formless. Water has no form of its own. It simply takes on the shape of its container. Water, therefore, represents the first stage of the creative process. Before something fully takes shape, it resides in a formless and amorphous state. Only as it develops does a concrete and physical form emerge. This is why during the initial creation of the world itself, the Torah tells us that initially there was only water. Only afterwards did the dry land emerge from the water. This is the deep idea behind the flood. Hashem wasn't destroying the world. He was recreating it. Hashem immersed the world in water so that it could go back to its primordial state of formlessness and void. Only once it was in its original state could the dry land emerge once again from the waters, at which point Noah could now walk off the Teva into a new world. The Maharal explains that this same idea sheds light onto why the Jewish people had to immerse themselves into the waters of the Yamsuf. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the creation and birth of the Jewish people. So, just as the creation of the world and the recreation of the world emerged from water, the Jewish people had to be born from water as well. They entered the waters of the Yamsuf and emerged reborn. 
the Midrash explains that the splitting of the Yamsuf was like a pregnant woman's water breaking. The Jewish people entered the waters of the Yamsuf and emerged transformed. They entered as individuals, but emerged reborn as a nation. This was the prerequisite for receiving the Torah. We had to first become a nation. We had to first become reborn. Only by entering the Yamsuf could we be reborn as a nation. The nation which could now receive the Torah on Harsina. We can actually trace this pattern back to the origin of human life itself. Each of us is surrounded by amniotic fluid before birth. In the same way that the world itself was created from water, each of us has our own creation story. And therefore we emerge from our own waters. Our birth is like the birth of a new world. This understanding sheds light onto the mitzvah of mikveh as well. When one is ritually impure, he or she must immerse in a body of natural water. The entire body must be immersed, and one only makes a bracha upon emerging from the water. Now we can ask, well, why, why does this have to be? Well, why is it so? Like, but based on what we've explained, the answer should be so clear. When you immerse yourself in the water, you're going back to a pure and formless state, your original state from back when you were in your mother's womb. You're going back to your perfect root, your original source. But when you emerge, you arise reborn, recreated, taking on form and shape for the first time. The dry land has emerged from the ocean physical form has emerged from formlessness. So we can now understand the beautiful reason that a convert, a ger, must immerse in a mikvah. Because a Jewish convert is considered to be a newborn child. In order to be reborn, the convert must immerse himself or herself in the mikvah. Because once he or she emerges, they will have been reborn. He entered as who he used to be, but has emerged anew, reborn and ready for a new way of life. So before the Jewish people could receive the Torah, they had to be reborn, recreated with a new identity, both as individuals and as a nation. And, and this week, when we read about Ma'an Torah, we need to realize that we aren't just remembering what happened thousands of years ago. We are about to re-experience this transformative event ourselves. Yet, before we, re we receive the Torah, we, we must make sure that we ourselves go through our very own Kriyas Yamsuf, our very own rebirth. Because unlike this person in the, the original story we shared, we don't have, need to have amnesia to recreate our identity. You don't need to be told by someone else who we are. Every day, we get to choose who we are, what we believe in, and how we're going to live our lives. Every morning we get to recreate our identity. We don't have to continue making the same mistakes again and again and again. Each day we can restart anew. As Avram said, Anochi Afar Ve'efer, which means I am but dirt in ashes. So most people understand this to mean that Avram was a humble man. However, there's a much deeper explanation as well. Ashes. Ashes represent an elemental breakdown of something. And dirt represents the starting point of growth, the place where seeds are planted. Avraham was saying that every day he would ash himself, breaking himself down into his elemental and root form, and he would then plant himself anew in a field of dirt. Meaning Avraham would recreate himself every single day. He would never continue living on the way he'd been living until now. Each and every day, he would look within, break himself down, and recreate himself anew. So this year, as we, as we read about the giving of the Torah, we should be inspired to undergo a genuine rebirth in our own personal lives, to create an even more empowering identity, and experience a true Ma'an Torah.